Let's get things kicked cool. off properly. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Brad. I am the host of Successfully Sustainable, uh, a podcast all about kind of having conversations and learning how to live more attainable, maintainable, sustainable lifestyles. Uh, my guest today forgot my spiel, is Mr. Jay McNamara. He is the founder and owner of The Kind Kitchen, which is a, check the branding, a <laughs> vegan restaurant in Woodstock. Uh, whose mantra is to, to hashtag just be kind, which we love. Yeah, uh, He's, as we've already discussed, an avid Star Wars fan, yoga practitioner, and a chef who's traveled the world, especially in America, learning about how to cook vegan, sustainable, integrated lifestyles, and has luckily for us here in Cape Town returned home to share his love of food and the sustainable lifestyle with us, mm-hmm. which is just a delight. And thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. I'm yeah. very excited to have a chat. Thanks, Brad. Well, I mean, that was an awesome intro. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. I did, did a good little bit of research. Let's go a bit deeper into kind of how you found yourself on this journey, how I, I know you've yoga has been a big part of it. And yeah, yeah tell me about America, how, how that all started and why you did it. And Okay. Um, so ultimately, the main reason I went vegan is for the animals. That's the end of the story right okay. there. And um, animals essentially is part of our planet. So mm. I guess planet, planet, mm. animals, then health. Yeah. Um, yoga, the first, the very first and foremost, um, it's called yama, which is um, observance, is to not be, to not hurt, to, uh, to do the least amount of harm possible to anybody, anything. And with that comes the food that you eat. So mm. the very first, um, I guess, it's not a sutra, but the very first um, ideology or observance is called ahimsa. Mm. And ahimsa means nonviolence. And so that just resonated with me from day one. And at the time of um, kind of starting to decide, uh, I was already playing with vegetarianism um, and for those of you out there that don't know the difference, vegetarianism means you would still eat dairy products, right? Um, eggs, cheese, that kind of stuff. Um, but you would abstain from the animal mm. itself. Um, so I was already toying with the idea and um, my fiance and then to be wife at the time, uh, she was starting to do her yoga teacher training. Okay. And part of the yoga teacher training and a lot of yoga teachers out there listening would know that when you go into a yoga teacher training, the first thing they ask you is to go vegetarian at least mm. and to just try it for however long the course is. Um, there's a main reason for this. And the main reason is that your body is a lot lighter on a vegetarian vegan diet because you don't have this dead flesh that your body is mm. trying to yeah. obviously you know yeah. um kind of absorb process, and put into yeah. and process it's a lot we know the the background and the science behind that so it makes a lot of sense so they they teach you to go that way and see for yourself how it works mm. because ultimately yoga philosophy is based in vegetarianism um as you know from india and where it really comes from the core yeah. so that was the main reason and um part of this was watching documentaries now at the time this was 2009 yeah 2009 um the documentary that was on the circuit doing its rounds and i'm sh- i don't know if you've seen it yourself is earthlings uh, uh yeah. joaquin phoenix uh, narrates it man it's intense and um so i decided i'm gonna watch this documentary with uh, my then uh, ex-wife well, she, she's my ex-wife now. <laughs> <laughs> my fiance at the time and um Yeah, so I decided to watch it with her, and it was intense. Mm. Um, The part that really got to me, there's another cool documentary out at the moment, Sea Spiracy, and at the time I thought, you know, I'll go pescatarian. Mm. That seems not Mm. as intense. Mm. And when I got to the part on the ocean and the amount of sharks being pulled into Mm. the nets and the seals and the dolphins and all of the things that go with it, Mm. you know, I thought, well, that's not sustainable. That's not going to help anybody or anything. Yeah. So 
from then on, veganism was the way for me. And uh, so that's 2009. So it's 11 years now, um, no, 12 years, going into 12 years. And um, the journey just quickly and swiftly went from there um, into wanting to know all I could about the yoga philosophy, went and did my own teacher training in Costa Rica. Um, uh, at the time I was, so just to backtrack a little bit, I studied um, uh, design and animation when I left school. Mm. And um, that kind of worked for me for a long mm. time. And by the 2009, I'd had enough of it. So mm. it was already nine years of a career yeah. that I thought I'd had enough of marketing yeah. and eventing and that. So something else that was helping the planet was what I wanted to do. And um, so I got into yoga and went and studied in Costa Rica. And then that led me to Charleston led me to Austin, Texas, all these places that I talk about on the website. And the main one of them being Austin, Texas. Mm. Now, Austin, Texas is where I went and studied um, chefing at the Natural Epicurean in um, Austin, Texas. And I happened to be lucky enough to study under a fellow South African, Inga Botma. And um, she's from Tableview herself. She married uh, married a, an American guy. And um, I didn't know it at the time. Mm. Got there with uh, my wife at the time, Michelle. And um, we were introduced to a fellow South African and the Afrikaans, everywhere. you know, the first <laughs> thing that starts is the Afrikaans. My, Afri my Afrikaans is pretty cuck at the best of times, <laughs> but you know, you'll do the, the Ankhana Kenneth, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the, the familiarity, that was cool. So yeah, it was great just to, um, yeah, have a fellow South African teaching you the ways and coming from a very Afrikaans background, mm. Inga she was vegan, you know, mm. so it just, it, that stigma really mm. started to disappear. Mm. Um, so that was 2013. And that's uh, from there just escalated very quickly. The yoga journey took me into coming back to South Africa with um, Michelle. And we opened up um, Air Yoga Studio in Woodstock, not so long after getting back. Um, we were lucky enough to actually acquire it from another couple that were um, wanting to move on and mm. go study a little bit more. So Air Yoga was born at the Woodstock Exchange. Um, so for those of you that are out there listening, hey, um, <laughs> uh, that was another part of my life, you know. Yeah. And um, that journey lasted for a good four years almost. And part of that journey was teaching people how to live sustainably. Mm. So when your email came up, uh, that's something that's been close to my heart for a mm. long time. And taking workshops on how to go vegan, what mm. to do. We did teacher trainings and part of that teacher training was teaching a vegan lifestyle and uh, plant-based. Um, so the cooking and the actual restaurant mm. came way later. Yeah. So in this time, um, I was cooking for friends, family, mm. doing some workshops at people's houses. But it only came in 2017 when finally I had the opportunity to look at really starting up my own thing for the first time um, in a restaurant. So long story short, that's how we rounded up into The Kind Kitchen. Fascinating. I mean, yeah, I, I think, I mean, the, the yoga aspect of it, I think is very interesting and I can't call myself a proficient uh, yogi, but I mean, I've always enjoyed it, and yeah, yeah, I think it's I think it's a lot of fun. I for I'm vegetarian. Mm -hmm. I've been for for two years, um, but yeah, I mean, and for me, it was also kind of for me, it was originally for the like planets. It was just the easiest, simplest thing I could do to yep. reduce my individual carbon footprint and. Obviously, then the kindness towards animals is a really lovely byproduct of, yeah. of that initial um, side of things. And health, I th kind of, it wasn't my initial, uh, <laughs> you know, reason for doing it. But yeah. hey, I mean, I've definitely been sick less, all sorts of things. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll get, we'll get into the nutrition side of things as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you've kind of described the, the philosophy towards towards food. But, I mean, go in a bit more. The, the Kind Kitchen's philosophy towards plant-based mm -hmm. food. What are we, I mean, kindness, but also like the foodie side of yeah, things. Yeah, sure. So the philosophy behind it, um, you know, it's always been from day one comfort food. Mm. Um, comfort food is the thing that we all yearn for the mm. most. Um, and I think I, we saw it a lot during lockdown. Mm. Uh, that was the things that flew off the menu straight mm. away were those 
healthy things. Mm. I say healthier. Mm. Healthier. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but comfort is definitely what it's the kind kitchen stands for. Um, with that is the aspect of bringing it to the masses. Mm. The one thing that has totally gone against plant-based living veganism is the inaccessibility for most of the population. And it drives me crazy. Um, why these things, these products have mm. to be the prices mm. they are. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, to a degree, I myself as a restaurant owner was part of that mm. to a degree and am part of that. But we are at the mercy a lot of the yeah. times to the supplier that's bringing that product yeah. in. So it is changing. The things, the prices are coming down. I've yeah. noticed over the the years of going to look for some vegan yeah. cheese in the spa that just mm. happens to be down here. It's one of the better yeah, spas. So nice. <laughs> you know, they've got they've gone from a block of mm. two hundred gram cheese, vegan cheese, costing I don't know one hundred and fifty bucks down all the way to fifty bucks. Yeah. You know, locally produced yeah. and it's getting good. Um, milks that were just yeah, almond and disgusting. Just, they yeah. tasted like marzipan. Yeah. And now oat milk, you know, yeah. we've got so many great local brands yeah. that are um, doing so well. Um, so the inaccessibility, uh, inaccessibility of veganism is one thing that drove me to also start The Kind yeah. Kitchen. How do I make this accessible for the masses? How do I actually also train people in my own kitchen to help spread mm. the word back into their own cultures mm. and um, neighborhoods, yeah. you know? So I think to a degree, we've gotten there over the three odd years of going. And then, of course, COVID hits and that put a stop on mm. everybody's plans. Yeah. But that's still in the back of my mind every day, every podcast or every discussion I have, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's it's always going to be for the animals, the planet, yeah. but the, it's got to be accessible. Yeah, it's got to be for the humans too. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not a particularly yeah. you know, sustainable, yeah. sustainable lifestyle. You know, even for those that aren't poor, yeah. those that can afford it, why yeah. should we why, have to yeah. pay a hundred bucks have to be more? for one burger patty when yeah. it can be 10? Yeah. You know? yeah. It doesn't no, make sense. I mean, and this was actually a question I had and you almost answered it to the letter. I was going to say like, you know, how do we, because and it kind of goes into the misconceptions and stuff, but at the moment eating vegan conveniently, I think is more expensive than yeah. to conveniently eat a more meat-based diet. Yeah. And I think, to me, a large part of that, and I say this as a fairly recent vegetarian, is that, and you'll be able to hopefully give us a, a lot of insight here, but it's it's just that we're brought up cooking with meat as the primary. Yeah. That's the main components, and it's fairly easy to cook with and yeah. not that hard to stuff up. So, <laughs> you know, we can, you know, work with it. But, And I think that is more... the it is, I mean, meat is an expensive yeah. component yeah, to buy. It's very expensive. Yeah. Fresh fruit and veg and, you know, raw sources of other proteins and where, the, where they're plant-based are cheaper, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We just don't know how to work with them. Yeah. So people will buy meat or whatever, I think more out of convenience and lack of understanding of how to like really make that stuff yummy. But yeah, um, yeah and I was going to ask like, and you kind of touched on it, but the like balance of accessibility and profit, because you're obviously a business owner, you yeah. have to, you know, you've got staff to pay, you've got rent to cover, all of that, you have to make money and you have to make money over and above your expenses to make it viable. Yeah. And if your expenses are high, there's very little you can do there. Um, and uh, there's definitely no straight answer to that yeah. question. De <laughs> definitely not. And um, I think the one of the misconceptions for a lot of people Sure, vegan is expensive. Plant-based eating is expensive. It's coming down in price. But the expense is actually not seen from an animal point of view by a lot of people. Mm. They don't consider it the big expense that goes into raising that beast. Yeah. Um, a two-ton yeah. cow to be raised and chopped up. It takes two years yeah. you know, to get to a point and where so that's happened. Water. So much water, so much electricity. Um, so much plant. <laughs> plant. I mean, of course, these days they've fed yeah. a lot of soy. Yeah. I, I don't want to go into too much of that because I'm not, I don't, I don't raise cows. So I don't yeah. have enough knowledge on that mm. to speak too much to it. But what I have seen in the information I've come across 
is it's huge yeah. and it's the massive impact. We just don't have enough land. That's yeah. the ultimate, the, yeah. the beginning and the end of the story. We don't have enough land. Yeah. And there are products that are starting to come onto the market that are going to assist with this stem cell research. Mm. Um, actually, a uh, fellow vegan, um, Brett, he's one of the founding uh, creators here in South Africa, actually in Woodstock Exchange, in Mzanzi Meat. Oh, they, yeah. They're going to be one of the first to grow lab-grown meat. Oh, very um, So he'd be cool to get onto yeah, the... Yeah, I'd love to have him. He's a great uh, orator as mm. well. And, um, you know, it's very interesting to see, even from a vegan point of view, how the market's changing. Pea protein yeah. is so much more accessible. The price yeah. is coming down. Um, but... What's coming down the line is stem celled crayfish, mm. stem celled, yeah. you know, crab, More whatever it is, whatever yeah. you can think of, it's yeah. going to be grown in a lab. Now, you know, that's going to have a whole thing of ethics. And, <laughs> and, and also, it's not just stem cell, it's also cells. Mm. Yeah. So there's a difference. Yeah. Um, and Brett is someone that could speak yeah. more about that, but it is changing. So the cost of getting that packaged meat product yeah. to a shop yeah. is way more expensive yeah, on the environment what and what we pay. So I think if people start to see that and recognize yeah. it, buy the plant-based mm. option, the price will come down and it happens yeah. quickly. It, we're not talking years yeah, here. No, we're talking within a few months yeah. it starts to go down because if if those people start going to their manager at mm. the spa or where, wherever it is, whatever food retailer mm. it is, and actually ask for a product, yeah. they will go out of their way to find it yeah. for you because it's in their interest yeah. as a business owner to yeah. keep it on and their shelves. And once they start seeing that demand, it's it's very simple supply and demand. That's it's it. the most basic law of economics. Capitalism <laughs> yeah. at its best. Yeah, doing, doing <laughs> its work. So did I answer your question there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as, as far as I think it's possible to answer that question, I yeah. don't think it's an easy question to answer. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, let's... I mean, firstly, you mentioned COVID. Yeah. And... As a restaurateur, obviously, I come from the yeah. live music side of things. Uh, as a restaurateur, both industries that got massively kind of yeah. stuffed over by COVID. How has it impacted? Man, it's been rough. Mm. And, you know, we we had two restaurants going into mm. this. And both are gone now. Oh, wow. Woodstock, we lost in March. Oh, sure. And um, it's just unfortunate that we've lost it in such a quick, short, of sp uh, short space of time. Mm. But things happened out of my control. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll get into what's happening next with the Kind Kitchen. There's, there's things on the horizon. But unfortunately, Constantia was such a great environment. Mm. We had a 60-seater in Constantia mm. at Constantia 8. So yeah, I've actually been there. I didn't love that. Man, place. it was so cool. And... Um, we lost 16 staff members. That mm. was one of the biggest reasons we closed Constantia. Um, a lot of them, half of my staff were foreigners, yeah. um, Malawians, Zimbabweans, tried to give them jobs. Um, the other half South Africans. And, you know, people had to stay at home. People got sick. Mm. It made things were just so difficult. And, you know, the government, there's so many topics we can conversations mm -hmm. we can go down mm -hmm. with the government and did they do the right thing mm -hmm. blah 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 i think ultimately they did mm -hmm. um i think we're in a better place but i think the sustained lockdowns yeah. just destroyed our industry yeah. yours included mm -hmm. and i'm not a politician i'm yeah. not gonna even you know yeah. kind of get into that but Unfortunately, the economics of running a restaurant, landlords were tolerant to a point mm. and then no more. Yeah. Back pays of yeah. rent needed to happen, which couldn't happen yeah. if you're not making enough yeah. money. But I can tell you the one of the biggest things that actually destroyed my business, at least, is accounts. <laughs> accounts, 30-day accounts and 60-day mm. accounts. Mm. Whoever came up with that concept... Mm. Yeah. I don't know, man. In business school, you yeah. should rethink that concept. Yeah. But um, yeah, because you know, once you're in that kind of loop and you've yeah. got no money coming in, yeah, yeah, it'll become payable. Yeah, it's it's not payable. So, you know, um, obviously, people not coming to the restaurant that destroyed us. Um, there's only so many takeaways you can do mm. um, in a week or in a day. Yeah. Um, also, the shortening of hours, shortening of staff. Yeah. Man, there were, there's just so many economics yeah. that go into running a restaurant, and and also the food prices yeah. went up, petrol went up. Yeah, 
Um, Almost every factor would have just been more expensive or less accessible. Yeah, it was becoming more and more difficult for staff mm. to even get to work. You know, most of the staff that work in a restaurant, and I'm sure a lot of people know this, don't have their own transport. Mm. So, you know, that's why now, even back to level two, where we're yeah. at, restaurants have to close by 10 mm. so that staff have time to get home. They've got an yeah. hour to get home. And it's very difficult, you know. Yeah. A lot of taxis will shut down quicker than that. And how yeah. do you get your staff home? So there's a lot of things that came into play. So ultimately, yeah, COVID was devastating for the kind kitchen. We uh, we lost Constantia very quickly mm. in the whole thing. We decided to be agile, go back to our roots, and just stay in Woodstock. Mm. And it was good. Things were good for a long time. We were doing home deliveries. We were doing various deliveries around town. Um, but it just got to the point where mm, I couldn't manage anymore mm. by myself mm. uh, being the key person, the, the chef. Mm. I don't have a business partner. Mm. Um, so I didn't have anybody to kind of fall back on. Mm. I just had staff that relied on a salary. Yeah. So the decision was made just to shut it down until there was another way forward with potential investors yeah. and partners coming on board. Yeah. Um, also in the mix, um, COVID brought me a little boy. So oh, wonderful. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, so December, when December rolled a a a around, it was time to make some big cha yeah. uh, changes in my life and restaurant, mm. <laughs> those yeah. hours. So yeah. that was another big deciding factor. Yeah, no, I, can't. I mean, I'm glad that there's other things in the pipeline. Because yeah. It, um, and I mean, I think one thing, you know, the world's in a whatever stage at the moment, but I think one thing that COVID has done that is a positive to be is like the innovation that it's pushed. Yeah, is that it's pushed people, it's pushed restaurateurs, it's pushed the live music industry, it's pushed uh, all, every industry has had to evolve, <laughs> and in me, the large majority of cases for the better. And yep. you know they've they've grown and costs have people have f humans are enduringly uh, you know innovative yeah resilience for sure we, we make a plan so yeah yeah I, and i mean like you said like even just deliveries and it, it just forces one to think out of the box which i think which yeah. i think is really interesting yeah. um yeah i mean let's get into yeah some more yeah give me some difficult yeah. questions here let's um so <coughs> I mean, this is less a question for me, but more a question just for, for I mean, actually, that's a lie. Totally a question for me. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I mean, let's go. What do you think are the misconceptions around a plant-based eating style for people who mm. aren't or don't or, or aren't surrounded by people who, who, who partake? Yeah. I mean, just for context and like for, like my sister was vegetarian for a few years before me. Um, mm -hmm. And I very seriously doubt that I would be where I am now. I can't say where it would be, you know, without having someone in my house mm -hmm. who had been vegetarian before me, who knew how to cook that way, who knew mm -hmm. how to not just, you know, just eat carbs yeah. the whole time. Guiding the way or, for you. Yeah, ex I'd like, and, you know, yeah. I think it's important to acknowledge that. I, you know, I'm far from perfect and yeah. I don't know if I would, I, in fact, I definitely wouldn't be where I am now without having that support. And for a lot of people, especially in South Africa where, you know, meats is such a staple and yeah. who just don't have that influence. And you can have access to all the information. Yeah. But I think that having that person is, is a much bigger factor than, than we acknowledge. Yes. But yeah, what do you, what do you think of the, the, the misconceptions? And yeah. Um, you know, the first thing that always comes up is protein, of course. Mm. Uh, where do you get your protein? Yeah. Um, you know, protein is abundant in most plants that are green. Um, you know, that combined with um, a complex um, grain uh, such as rice, a legume, such as black beans. So if you take kale, black beans and brown rice, you've got a great complete complex protein that's got all the aminos you need. Yeah. It's got all the power you need. It's going to sustain your body for longer. Mm. Um, so the misconception protein uh, sure, deficiency in B12 is another misconception. Um, most people, most adults on this planet these days are having to take some form of a mm. uh, supplement mm. to supplement whatever it is, yeah. vitamin D because of lack of sunshine, uh, B12, 
because we're not getting enough from meat. Mm. Sure, meat is a is a carrier and a big yeah. source of B12, but it's only that because of the product that that animal eats, which yeah. is the grass, yeah. you know, the ground, the yeah. green thing that the sun is yeah. <laughs> Where sustaining. Where do you think it's coming from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Um, unfortunately, the soil, as I understand it from many scientists and the podcasts I've listened to, the soil around the world that we now have is mm. not as rich yeah. in a lot of minerals that we yeah. used to have. So yeah. B12 is becoming more and more difficult to come across mm. very easily. Yeah. So B12 is very easy to get now in a supplement, but yeah. it's fortified in so many foods like yeah. Nutritional yeast, which we use as a as a cheese yeah. additive, yeah. you know, and it's it's an inactive yeast, so mm. don't have to worry from a stomach point yeah. of view. Um, and also, lots of people don't know this, but uh, you know, Rice Krispies is fortified mm. <laughs> with vitamin B, you know, and uh, riboflavin and, and that kind of stuff, which is all important. So a lot of our foods already yeah. that you maybe are eating, even milk, mm. cow's milk is fortified yeah. with minerals, yeah. vitamins, because there's not enough in it. Yeah. Um, kale has more calcium sustained and brought in by the body than yeah. cow's milk does, you know? So I think these are misconceptions that people don't understand at, at first, but once you start to do, read and do the science and mm. understand and listen and, and actually read from people that know what they're talking about, um, nutritionists, dietitians, they all have studied these things uh, the information's there at yeah. a click of, you know, Google click, and you can find all of this stuff very easily. So protein, the lack of vitamins and nutrients, iron comes yeah. up a lot. But again, you know, we can get all of mm. that in certain foods, um, green vegetables, again, different legumes, um, lentils. It's all there, yeah. readily available. You just have to eat a balanced life uh, a balanced diet yeah and by balanced it's not eating vegan junk food all the time it has its place yeah even the food i create uh, create and created in the kind kitchen the vegan com comfort food to a degree can be perceived as junk food that has its place yeah. but as much as i can i always try and incorporate whole foods in my diet so nothing that's overly yeah. processed yeah and that makes a lot of sense right yeah i mean that always tastes the best yeah yeah. You know, Beyond Burger and uh, Impossible Burger, all of these burgers, they have their place mm. and they ha have good nutrition in them. Mm. But if you're going to eat that every day, just like yeah. a normal burger patty, it's not going to be good for you. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> so you kind of mentioned um, nutrition and, and all of these things. Do you think in terms of, the, I mean, the accessibility of veganism, I think now there's... There's so many different aspects to it. There's a the cost, which at the moment is um, extreme, and or yeah. for convenience is extreme, and, yeah. and for people who don't understand it, it, it can be expensive. And yeah. there's also kind of social factors where mm -hmm. culturally, in in a lot of cultures, meat is aspirational. Sure, it's something you get brought up to go uh, yeah. like, if I'm well off, I can have meat every day. Yeah, and it's like. You know, and then there's aspects of veganism like quinoa farming <laughs> in Peru, which has decimated what used to be their staple grain. Sure. And now the, those people can't afford it anymore yeah. because now there's this massive demand from... Absolutely. You know, and, and I think it's it's important to interrogate mm -hmm. our own... Of course. You know, we, we, we think it's sustainable, but it's like, you know, as is with all things, there's no black and white. No, of there's course. There's not, oh, veganism is perfectly sustainable and amazing mm. and the solution, you know? Yeah. There's 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 always nuance to it, and and I think it's important to to <coughs> interrogate those things and yeah, and um, yeah. I also just kind of wanted to get your perspective on you know, as humans as we evolved, we were eating meat, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of science that would say that it helped our brains. The sure. excess blood helped our our brains develop to to where we are today. Yes, and um, that being said, we weren't eating meat two meals a day. We were eating meat like once every two weeks yeah. when we got a lucky arrow. <laughs> yeah, and maybe, like maybe, maybe grams. yeah, brought down <laughs> a little bulky. Yeah, you know, and again, it's it's excess and and yeah. balance. And like you said, if you eat a Beyond Burger mm -hmm. twice a day all the time, that's not going to be good for you either. Yeah, you know, and and I think it mm -hmm. kind of goes back to what you were saying about the nutrition and stuff as well. Like yeah. we just don't know. People, people kind of ask me, how do you get, like, you know, how do you have a 
well-rounded diet eating vegetables or like eating vegetarian it's like well yeah. by having a well-rounded diet <laughs> you yeah. know just it just doesn't include meat yeah and um yeah i think it's important to have those conversations as well and, and interrogate the balance uh, the balance of all of it and yeah so sure. and meeting people where they're at yeah, yeah i think it is a really important part of uh, part of having these conversations and you mm -hmm. know people i for a while the reason i was not going vegetarian for a period was because it felt aggressive and the Absolutely. the like you have to be x y and yeah. if not you're about and i was just going I can't refute a <laughs> single one of your points because yeah. they're undeniable. Yeah, of course. You have but to maybe have like a, a top yeah. knot. <laughs> yeah, you're being, it, it feels aggressive. And, yeah. you know, that's not the point. And, and the, the whole point of this podcast is, yeah. you know, I realize for some people, whether it's price or some people's health or whatever, doing something like going plant-based eating-wise isn't viable at mm -hmm. this moment. And I, I don't think it's about, you know, pushing people who think that, Oh, no, 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 but like it is. Uh, you, if we do X, Y, and Z, and uh, then w it can be. You yes. know, it's it's saying okay, cool. Well, then just don't eat meat. Meat free Mondays. Start Correct. there, and then maybe you do two days a week, and then you know yeah. build it because also then your body's going to get less shocked. You can't go from eating meat to all of a sudden yeah. completely plant based. Not because it's inherently bad for you. But just your body is used to a certain type of fuel. And yeah. if you completely take away that, your body's going to freak out. Yeah, of course. And then you're going to go, oh, my God, I tried to go vegan and I nearly killed yeah. me. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> I was tired. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, yeah. it's all of those things. I used to eat a lot of white meat when I was, I didn't really eat red meat for a good long while yeah. before I went vegetarian. But it was a lot of white meat just for the protein. And But now my energy levels are way more consistent yeah it's it's much less like spiked yeah and i was doing more like sport and stuff at the time so uh, you know but i even tend to think you know for the consistent energy level like mm -hmm. when i was eating meat it would be like i wake up in the morning hating everything mm -hmm. eat something you know and then i'm like i can work out for an hour and then like get yeah. to school at the time and just half an hour in yeah head on the desk can't get up yeah, you know, until lunch, and then there's a buzz, and then and then just before training, and then yeah, and then get to bed just. And whereas now I'm just more like yeah, it's consistent yeah. over the day, consistent fuel. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of interesting points that you raise there, and um, you know, I'm always quite aware because I have been that vegan, yeah. and I think Cape Town has the one of the best um, sayings, you know, don't be a dick. Mm. And uh, vegans the same, you know, don't be that vegan, don't mm. be that that vegan dick. And it, it's very easy mm. when you're passionate about mm. something in the beginning, mm. you must know it all. Mm. And you want to, you just want to share this knowledge mm. with everyone. And if they don't share your opinion, <sighs> ah, you get so yeah. angry, you know, and you become a dick. Mm. So I think it's, I think that's the first thing to avoid w if you go down this, when you go down this road of veganism, plant-based eating is, you know, you got to understand everybody's coming at it from a different point mm. of view, right? There's always that, that, uh, that story of your story, yeah. my story, and then there's the real story. Yeah. And those are just different perspectives mm. and opinions, right? Mm. And we, and as humans, it's very difficult to, relate to someone if they don't share your yeah. opinion so you get a you get pushed with a lot yeah. of aggression and it comes from both sides i yeah. mean i've had some conversations with people that carnists that, oh, that eat meat and they're so angry like why are you doing this to the rainforest why are you doing this to ra orangutans blah, blah blah but you know ultimately people are just trying their best and i think if you do your best mm. and you set a good example then it will all fall into place and that's yeah. what i try to do every day yeah. i actually have gotten to a point where i block out a lot of that noise yeah. and i don't even engage like at a party yeah. when people hear that yeah. i'm a chef a vegan chef they want to know okay but what about this yeah. and you know what about this uh topic i'll engage but if i see that it's going nowhere then yeah. it's better just to like let it go yeah. it's the same kind of thing as religion or yeah. you know 
sharing someone's political mm. views or not sharing their yeah. political views. It's always going to end in a fight. Yeah. So there's and at always what point are you, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're both Just so engaged in your opinion. Are you really going to change their mind by yeah. fighting them about it? Exactly. Almost definitely not. Nobody's going to be right mm. if everybody's wrong. Right? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> so I mean, I think it kind of goes back to what you said in the beginning about the kind kitchen and how you were saying like, you know, people will come up to you and say, Oh no, but you know, what about this impact? And, you know, it does soy farming impacts rodents yeah, and insects course. and what, like every action has an impact at the, and yeah. human beings have a horrible impact yeah. in general. Like right now we're just not great. Basically you we're know? living our karma right yeah, now. You know? And so it's, to me, it's, it's so much about intent mm -hmm. and, especially having these conversations with people. It's so much about the intent and it's, yeah. it's not, I'm right because I'm X or Y and you're wrong because you don't partake in it. It's, you know, and, and it's context, like you said, and, yeah. and perspective is I'm coming at from one perspective. And I mean, with the polarization of information and, and everything that goes on in the world, and there's so much that we only get our little polarized bit, and, yeah. you know, there are going to be people who eat meat who see all of the stuff about how, you know, farming for, grains is destroying the rainforest and that's sure. the headline they see and then they go okay well grain farming is destroying the rainforest and then yeah. the other perspective is well we need that much grain to feed the cows yeah. if we didn't need to feed the cows we wouldn't need that much grain yeah so it's and then there's the perspective of oh well it's cows that <laughs> as a byproduct are killing the rainforest and yeah. both are accurate yeah. you know yeah. based on the information yeah and it's all about the context and yeah i think and it's 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 a pet peeve of mine with just generally with the polarization of everything at the moment is just you know yeah we're all getting fed such very detailed incredibly effective propaganda yeah and it's all you know algorithms and, and whatever that that give us all our information and we've got to just be more forgiving yeah. of the other person's propaganda more so than anything else you know it's it's yeah. it's saying look i don't think you're here to be an asshole. Yeah. I think you're here and you have this opinion because you've been fed a different set of information to me. Yeah. And to me, my information is right and correct and it might be. And you might have a conflicting set of information that is also, you know, based on how the data gets yeah. fiddled with, also correct. Yeah. And we've just got to meet in the middle and have the conversation about, you know... That's the that's the place that's difficult for a lot of people, and and having that conversation is good. These mm. conversations um, actually open up your mind more. Mm. Absolutely. But with that conversation means you actually have to listen a lot of the times, mm. and that a lot of people I've found it's very difficult for a lot of people to just sit back and listen to someone talk for a full minute, hear their opinion, mm. and then speak. Yeah, they want to be heard straight away. So. It's it's ingrained in us to be the loudest, shout the loudest, mm. um, you know, show the way. So, you know, the aspect of veganism will continue to be ridiculed for a long time. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are so many um, shining lights mm. that are starting to, and spotlights on veganism yeah. that's starting to show people that, yes, this is one of the ways, mm. there are many ways. But, you know, for Michelin star chefs mm. globally to start going, you know what, we're taking meat off the menu mm. fully. Sure. We don't, we actually don't care if it, if it irritates a lot of you out yeah. there. We're taking it off because it's not sustainable. Mm. We've just come out of a massive year of showing that it's yeah. where one of the root causes, potential root causes of yeah. COVID has come from. Um, still to be debated. Yeah. Uh, you know. And it just makes more sense for us as a restaurant right yeah. now to go plant-based. Yeah. So it, it shows that things are changing. And, you know, as far as the anthropological aspect yeah. of meat, that we needed meat, mm. yes, our ancestors potentially needed that to fuel up. Yeah. Lentils, grains, those kinds of things were a lot more difficult yeah. to... Yeah, I mean, hard if to you, farm If you hardly had if fire, you, yeah. how are you going to cook up lentils yeah. for, for 12 hours? Yeah. Soak them first. Yeah, exactly. We, <laughs> didn't, know? we didn't have the knowledge. <laughs> exactly. Activate the nuts, yeah. you know, all of that kind of stuff. Make your own nut milk yeah, with your nut bag. running around in loincloths. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just pull back the expectations. <laughs> you know, a simple thing there. It's yeah. evolution. Yeah. You know, we evolved, but look how long that evolution yeah. took from when we were roaming the plains. Yeah. And then when, 
things started to change in technology of food mm. and being able to get complex grains and complex proteins from different sources into us, things changed. Yeah. The technology helped us along. Also, mindsets changed. And I think this is one thing for me that always does come up and it's, it can be a bit of a tricky subject. And in, um, you know, uh, earthlings, they, yeah. they touch on it quite nicely. So if you'd like to know more about yeah. this kind of subject, you know, as humans, we've had to evolve fascism, move out of fascism, move out of the isms, the sexism, yeah. the racism, all of these things that have they've plagued us for so long. If we continued to think that way to this day, mm. I don't know what would be left yeah. of us as a society. So we have all yeah. moved evolved on. Our minds we've yet, evolved. Yeah. Because if we didn't, man, we'd be in so much more trouble. So it's the same thing for eating. Eating is evolving. The stuff that we eat to fuel us, our brains, and to fuel our the way we live right now mm. is evolving. So we have to evolve with that. Otherwise, we will be the bottom of the food yeah. chain. And this is one of the ways, I yeah. feel. Veganism, yeah. uh, plant-based eating is one of the yeah. ways. So, you know, um, that question of, you know, the lion has, has con um, canines, and we've got canines, shouldn't we be eating meat? Yeah, sure, our bodies have just taken a lot longer to evolve, you know. Um, sure, we still have those things from that evolutionary point of view, but it doesn't mean that we still have to connect to that animalistic yeah. thing that we don't even know mm. anything about anymore. Yeah. Like, there's, there's so many debates that we can have just in that topic mm. alone, but, you know, I don't want to go down there right now. It's... Uh, I think the interesting thing with um, the stuff that you see on the shelves, mm. a lot of people don't even understand the the how far it's had to go mm. to get to that 500 grams of yeah. rump, uh, what it entails. Um, most kids mm. don't even know. You know, most kids on the flip side don't even know what... Um, what spinach looks like mm. growing in the ground yeah. or, ca or kale or cabbage mm. or if they had to go out into nature and identify with the leaves or the flowers mm. that are growing, could they identify that vegetable? Mm. Most kids can't. Most adults can't because we're so disconnected. Yeah. So I think the disconnect is also the problem here is that mm. since the 50s or 60s, whenever factory farming, mm. farming started to become very popular mm. because they realized it was much quicker, easier yeah. to get you know things done. Um, we've started to disconnect with yeah. nature and that comes back full circle. So what yeah. you're talking about, the aspect of that survival mm. is very important. Yeah. Um, there is... And, you know, in that same vein, I want to be able to forage, uh, not just for, you know, I don't want to just do it. You know, mean, I, you know, sometimes if, you know, the shit hits the fan, <laughs> uh, there might not be a buck. I must know sure. what mushrooms to eat M mushrooms, and what mushrooms not to eat. I mean, Newlands Forest, <laughs> around Cape Town itself, yeah. there's so many forests that we have and you can go forage just mm. here at the ocean. You can yeah. forage kelp. You know, you can drive a few hours out and forage even more beautiful yeah. sea vegetables. But there are a very uh, finite amount of people that have that knowledge yeah. that can show you mm. what to eat. You know, even my knowledge is mm. limited from, you know, having gone on a few foraging things. So it's very important mm. to get back to those basic yeah. elements. So, yeah, the aspect of meat and um, isn't it necessary and all of that. Sure, I think... Everybody has to make that decision yeah. for themselves. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to, again, about not being a dick. Mm. Um, not, don't push your agenda on someone yeah. else. If someone wants to go vegan, if someone wants to eat yeah. plants, let them go at their yeah. own choice. I'm merely here to mm. impart my provide knowledge. Provide the information provide and the context. The that's it. You know, I've got a few videos out on YouTube. Those are hopefully will get some more going. Mm. It's pretty difficult to get good content mm. out there. So whoever's creating that content mm. at the moment, when you come across it on Instagram, yeah. follow them, like yeah. their stuff and support them because it it's pretty, it's, yeah. it's difficult, uh, you know? And, uh, and it's important. It's that, important. That, like having the conversation. It yeah. actually goes quite nicely into, are there any like local brands or... Um, companies people organizations that you kind yeah. of would like to shout out give a little yeah. whatever just Definitely. also because i'm gonna look back on this and email all of them to <laughs> be on the podcast so. yeah, <laughs> of course i mean firstly i would say you know pro veg if yeah. you haven't already uh started speaking to donovan will from pro veg um he's a great um you know 
he's he's someone ambassador that's out there to assist mm. with these same conversations yeah. and ProVeg is actually an international organization that was started in Germany and they have a local branch here. So uh, Donovan runs it here and he would be great to talk to. Um, they help with the information and knowledge. They've We've just come out of Meat Free May mm. where they showcased the different proteins that are available, Biltong, um, can we call it Biltong? <laughs> you know, yeah, Borivors, yeah. can we call it yeah. Borivors? All of these kinds of things, the meats. Another person that has been a great supporter of ours from day one, Nude Foods, mm. Paul Paul uh, Rubin from Nude Foods. Yeah. Uh, what he's doing there from a sustainable point of view is fantastic. It's not easy to get things into retail that don't have plastic. Yeah. And, you know, plastic, it's one of the the things that we become so used to yeah. because it's so convenient, yeah. but glass jars and all of these things yeah. that our grandparents had, tins, all of yeah. that worked they just work. as well. <laughs> you know, we just not, weren't as familiar yeah. with them. So there's just changing your mindset. So Paul's doing a great job. And there's so many great vegan eateries, plant-based yeah. eateries out there um, in Seapoint. Um, you know, uh, I say Seapoint straight away, but this is where the disconnect is and it's changing. Yeah, Seapoint was one of the areas yeah. the Atlantic City yeah. board. but it's now changing you know into Woodstock into yeah. the the suburbs mm. uh, Edge Meads just got a, a few more vegan places um, my partner at the moment was telling me that she was reading someone had gone to Durbanville there's uh -huh. oh it was actually my partner's mom telling me today they went to a great restaurant Italian restaurant in Durbanville that is rated one of the best vegan meals in Durbanville um, I forget the name of this place, unfortunately, but um, I'll, I'll yeah. email it to you and you can Perfect. just put it yeah. there. So there's so many great places. Um, Fries, of course. Big shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a shout out to Fries. They've been going, they're the OGs, man. They've yeah. been going for a long time. They get lamb basted so many times, mm. but how many meals, how many brides have you yeah. gone to oh, as a vegetarian 100%. yourself? Just a good old fry oh, sausage yeah. or a patty. At least you had the option. Yeah. Other than mushrooms, great, you know, yeah. dry mushrooms and that. But uh, their products, since they were bought over by Live Kindly, their products have started to just go to mm, another the level. Innovations the innovations. The innovations there. The big fry bourrevorce is Absolutely. So, so they're doing super well, and I'm super proud of them. Um yeah, and th there's so many more coming yeah. up. There's so many good brands coming up. Yeah, um, so many. Which is so Too exciting. many to mention yeah. right now, actually. Just patties alone, yeah. you know. Um, Urban Vegan, there's uh, the they've got a burger patty. Then Herbivore. Yeah. Um, they've got some amazing patties that are at Hudson's yeah. now. Um, there's Naked Leaf. Mm. Ah, there's just there's so many. There's a beans-based one as well. Yeah, there's, there's like the, the, you know, so much so that even from a kind kitchen point of view, it was like, which one do I pick yeah. now? You know, which How one? nice <laughs> to have a diversity <laughs> of options. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, it's, it's so cool to see how that's been coming up more and more. I mean, yeah. you know, A, from just uh, as a perspective of a consumer of those things and someone who likes good food it's just having the diversity and the variation is is so nice and yeah you know all the love to fries but it's nice to have some options you absolutely know? and for fries to be expanding that range and, yeah. and and all that um yeah we'll start wrapping up now mm -hmm. do you have three to five tips for people looking to start on that you know journey towards a, a more sustainable plant-based lifestyle yeah. as to like simple easy things they can implement maybe there's a dish that or or a um, component that you really love and think is undervalued yeah um yeah something like that just a few steps and tips that we can share with the people yeah absolutely um you know the a lot of retail brands food retail brands now um checkers spa pick and pay and then down the line, far, 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 far in a galaxy, far, far away, <laughs> Woolworths. Um, sorry, Woolworths, you're so far behind. But those other brands, they've come so far mm. and they are seen as more affordable. Yeah. Woolworths is seen as a lot more premium. Yeah. And it's so great to see how those brands have embraced veganism. Yeah. And you can go there pretty easily and just go to the deli itself. Yeah. And there's most of the time there is a vegetarian vegan option mm. on go for your quick yeah. meal of the day, right? Checkers' simple truth range is so nice. Mind blown. 
it's it's so really nice. Look, you do have to look out every now and yeah. again for the lacto vegetarian, yeah, yeah, which yeah. means milk in there, milk solids, but it's so good. Most of it's vegan. Um and so I would say one of the most underrated food items I think is still the chickpea. Mm. The chickpea gives us so much, right? In a can itself, just the aquafaba you can make meringues with. Mm. Uh, there's so many recipes online just to whip that up. If you've got a hand beater, cast the sugar, vanilla <laughs> essence, there you go. you got some meringue. You know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult than yeah. that. Okay, I'm making yeah. it sound super easy. But if you're a baker, you know what you're mm. doing. You've made meringues before. That's even difficult yeah. with egg whites. <laughs> yeah. So the aquafaba. Yeah. A. The chickpea itself, just a snack. Yeah. You know, roast those bad boys. Uh, obviously, you pat them nice down and dry. Crispy. Roast them up with some smoked paprika, some cumin, some salt. You've got a good snack mm. to take for lunch. And you've got protein in that snack. Mm. You can also smash that up into a burger. You can make hummus. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the yeah. list goes on. Um, you can make chickpea uh, fillets mm. by like a schnitzel almost. Mm. You know. So there's so many great recipes out there. Um, there are good um, Instagram, local Instagrammers mm. that are doing amazing recipes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So give them a follow. Um, we we drop some of our recipes from time to time as well. And, you know, in the next few months, I'll be bringing out a cookbook. So that's what I've been working on for the last six months um, since my little boy was born. So Penguin and I have been working on a book together and it's going to be called Vegan Now What? That's so exciting. I'm very keen. <laughs> because that's the first thing that yeah. always got asked. Yeah. When someone came into the restaurant, I've gone vegan. Now what do I do? <laughs> what do I do with this block of tofu? <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, bless my partner's mm. uh, mom, Sean. Um, Sean's mom, uh, Mary D, has just gone plant-based, I guess, the last six months. And she's every time she comes to the house, she's like, what do I do with this tofu? You always <laughs> make it taste so good, but when I do it, it's <laughs> crap, you know? And it's just basic things, you know? Yeah. Um, keep it simple. Mm. That's the first rule, yeah. I would say. Soy sauce is your friend. Not too much, but soy sauce is mm. your friend to make things taste good. It has umami. Miso paste is your friend. You can get inexpensive miso paste. There's amazing brands like Clear Spring that are so good from Wellness Warehouse. Mm. But unfortunately, they are a little bit out of most people's yeah. price range. You can get the cheaper ones from ch Asian shops for 10 bucks, mm. uh, like 100 grams. And Do they're the so job. good. And miso umami the flavor all-rounded flavor that we get from meat mm, yeah get from miso yeah. you get from soya the mushrooms yeah. give you umami so mushrooms also one of my top things that i love to cook with um i would go as far as saying that mushrooms would be my dish if i had to cook for a super celebrity that's yeah or just anybody coming to my yeah. house it doesn't have to be a celebrity you know you got one dish that's got that one dish mushrooms is my go-to and um a very cool chef that I came across and learned when I was in Austin, Texas, is um, Chad Serrano from Wicked, uh, Wicked, uh, Wicked Health. His brand, check him out. Um, he does some amazing stuff with oyster mushrooms and that, where mm. he pan sears it with two uh, cast iron pans. I've learned that technique from him, and I use that a lot in my own cooking at home. Mm. So, chickpeas, mushrooms, soy sauce, miso, you've got it, and support your local yeah. retailers um, yeah. even Woolworths I mean yeah. Woolworths they've done yeah. great stuff they've started coming up with some they, new they, stuff they're recently getting there. That's, that's, yeah. that's quite nice getting there um, instant meals like nice instant meals which yeah. are nice and there aren't too many of those as well which yeah. is cool to start seeing happening. and I mean a simple thing to make is a chickpea sandwich mm. like a chicken mayo just smashing chickpea mm. with some diced red onion or chives some mayonnaise from Be Well um, be well makes in a be great well, mayonnaise. Canola, mayo. You know, Swellendam, those guys have got it down. Um, and uh, yeah, some mustard, if you like that. Let's mash that all up into a into a bowl and you've got some amazing tasting. It's Chick never going to be chicken. chicken it's mayo. never going to be chicken, but <laughs> chickpea it's mayo. chickpea mayo, you know. So yeah. Yeah, there you go. Some lemon juice. Amazing. <laughs> I'm going to actually go and try several of those over the next few Put days. Put it in a wrap if you don't yeah. dig uh, Love bread. Love a good wrap. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Cool. I mean, is there, oh, this is your little moment. Um, I'm hmm. actually going to keep an eye on the camera to make sure that it's it's all good. But you, this is your monologue moment. If there's anything on your mind, anything you want to tell the people, we'll cut this clip out and, and post it as, as part of the promo as well. And okay. yeah, if you want to just whatever's on your mind, your, if you had to talk to people about 
plant-based lifestyle, anything that's, this is your moment. I'm just going to check that it's all good and then it's over to you. Yeah, so I, I guess my big passion with uh, plant-based vegan lifestyle is, you know, trying to get my mom vegan. That would be, if I, if I get there, I know I've actually won a big battle. No, but jokes aside, um, the, the growth of veganism is growing because people like you watching right now are keen to try things. Uh, if shows like Expresso Show, who, you know, reaches millions of viewers, are constantly calling for vegan plant-based chefs like myself to come onto the show and talk plant-based and veganism, you know things are changing. So be open-minded, check it out. Nobody's saying you have to do it forever. You're the master of your own destiny, um, but give it a go. You know, um, all of your most fantastic family recipes, you'd be surprised what you can do by just altering them slightly and making them vegan, trying it for a week. Every year, Veganuary happens, which is January. It's 31 days, a good challenge. So it's a good time to also reset your system, try things, try new things, and maybe challenge yourself to that one meal. Maybe it's dinner that you cook together. I've got to say that plant-based eating... Um, for me as a dad now, you know, my kid's growing up, he's vegan, and we're ticking all the boxes, making sure he's happy, healthy, and all of these things. But he he will also be experiencing these things, and I want him to grow up in a world that's a lot more sustainable, that's free from hatred, uh, free from anger, and all of those things can only happen if we change our mindsets. You can never, ever kill an animal with love. You're always going to have to kill that ha that animal. Unfortunately, in some way, it's a hatred or um, the word I'm trying to use is intense. It's going to be a slaughter of some of some way. So the, the act of killing is in itself, unfortunately, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Brett? It's just not love-based. It's not love-based, I guess. When you kill anything, there is there is no real love behind that sure you can have the intention that you want to kill it for the right intention but unfortunately the act of killing itself as we know has no love to it okay so if we are as a society a global society to change our own ways and shift our own opinions about how we see somebody else we have to change and i think one of the ways we can change that is through the things that we eat because if that thing that we do at least three times a day is not done in hatred and murder and death it's done through something that's living sure <laughs> sure we have to kill beetroot or we have to slaughter or butcher beetroot or the vegetable but it's a different thing you know what i mean so i'm um, not trying to um you know, take the essence out of what I'm saying here by joking around. But what I'm, what ultimately, what I'm trying to say is, if we want to change our mindsets towards our fellow human beings that we potentially don't see as the same as ourselves, that will never change if we can't see the sameness in an animal and in their eyes that they deserve as much freedom and love and respect on this planet as we do. So the only way to do that is to kind of change course, change the way we think, divert to a plant-based diet, and take it from there. And you'll see the change in you, the kindness in you um, happens like that. And I'm not saying that people that eat meat, please don't get me wrong, people that eat meat, I'm not saying that you're evil and uh, that you should not be around. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. You can cut that, Brett. What I'm trying to say is carnists... Um, it's just a m different mindset, right? I think I'm just waffling a little bit. Brett's got what he needs there. That would be my ultimate message to people out there is to change the ultimate narrative that we have in this world, which we've seen over the last year, the Me Too movement, the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, every kind of uprising that we've seen is all based in something of hatred that we as a 
person do not see in the other person because we think we're right and they're wrong or vice versa. So to change that, we have to change our, perspe our perspective. And to do that, I truly believe that food is one of those ways because food brings people together as well. And I'll leave it there. Remember, be kind. There's cool. a lot of waffling. We'll, have to <laughs> we'll clean it the, up a the little bit. The core bit. message of the, what I'm trying to say. The core is there. You get quite, I get quite passionate about that. <laughs> no problem. That's why we gave you a little monologue segment. Okay. All righty. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. We'll wrap things up now. Um, firstly, yeah. thank you so much for, yeah, for coming for on and having the chats. It's thanks been for really enjoyable for me and just the learning has, has been great. Yeah. Like I've said, this is very much a, you know, a passion project and excuse for me to have conversations with people that, what you know, a, I a want cool to. Way to work, yeah, man. no, it's great. This is awesome. Um, very much leveraging my own platform for my own <laughs> game. Anyways. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, very excited to s check out your cookbook when it yep. comes out. Um, yeah. So hopefully December that will be out and I'll be posting about it and the way forward for the kind kitchen. And uh, it's a bit sketchy at the moment, but I'm <coughs> busy, um, you know, pitching for funds. So yeah. that's that's all happening overseas at the moment as we speak. Uh, look, if there's local investors that want to chat, they know how to get hold of me. <laughs> info the kind is, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> info the kind the details. kitchen but yeah um, basically uh, kind kitchen will be changing the way it is and uh, whatever that new way is I'm excited about things change for a reason evolution evolution man and I wanted to leave you with this hat today oh thank you Papa I'm gonna start building a set over time of all the cool brands that that come and and, and people and um, with uh, Yoda's mantra of course be kind you must i love that mm, be I'm, kind, I'm you very must. <laughs> i'm very happy about that amazing thank you so much thank you all right Brett. um yeah and that's pretty much it thank you to you the viewer or the listener if you're not watching it although you can go check it out on youtube and whatever platform you listen to your podcast on um big thanks to jay we'll put all his info and links and and all sorts wherever is appropriate for the platform but yeah thank you to the listener or the viewer for taking part as well i mean we're the ones sitting here but i think it's really important that you're a part of the conversation as well and so thank you for taking the time to listen to us and and, and engage in the conversation because that's how we make all this happen is by just continuing to have these conversations so yeah. thank you and thank you whichever shot I choose um, and yeah that's us and from I've been calling you Brett and it's Brad yeah, it's okay it happens it's a regular <laughs> thing do was, not worry I about it I was thinking it. of Brett uh, uh, all the time from Nzanzi it now. very much happens <laughs> sorry but Brett no it's all good <laughs> yeah and thank you so yeah that's us from Successfully Sustainable and um, yeah remember to hold yourself to a standard of constant improvement and not perfection because that's just the way to go that's it man amazing thank, thank you Thanks, everybody. Thank you.